Hey everybody, Jonathan Blaria here, covering the new uh, DJI Mini 3 Pro firmware updates we have today. These are actually quite awesome. So we have a Mini 3 Pro firmware update of uh, V01000400, and we have the RC uh, update, which is V01020000. So it's the zero two that is the significance there. And so among those, we'll, they added support for DJI Air 2S, and that's a whole separate subject. People are glad to see it. Nothing for the Air 2, um, so I'm kind of glad that I got rid of it because it looks like they're not throwing a lot of support into it anymore. They never gave it master shots, and it just kind of is a poor poor relation now they're kind of not doing much with it in terms of updates it's a great drone but i've got the mini 3 pro doing all of that work replacing it essentially if not quite as stable in the air in terms of wind it does everything else uh, above and beyond what air 2 could do all right so let's get out of here and i want to show you a couple of these things going on with features it's quite amazing so i don't know if it's amazing but it's good so Got the, uh, the drone sitting on the front porch there and just watching the squirrels play in the leaves. Uh, there's a squirrel right there. Squirrel. Another squirrel. Two squirrels. All right. Getting distracted here. Okay. So let's show you the, the most significant one in my opinion here is this guy. If you go to camera and come down, you'll see something called style, right? And it will be closed. You've got to do this little drop down arrow on the left next to the word style. And there it is. So you get sharpness and noise reduction. Sharpness is awesome. Noise reduction is super awesome. The Mini 3 Pro is very aggressive with noise reduction, particularly at high ISO settings like 800 and above. Philip Bloom did a uh, kind of a rant on it but he was absolutely correct noise reduction is way overkill and it's just nice to be able to drop it off a bit if you'll notice the zero value for noise reduction is past the middle there's a reason for that you can only add plus one right but you can take it down two notches whatever those values are we don't know but you can do more Reduction of the noise reduction, then you can do adding noise reduction. For sharpness, it's a plus one or two and a minus one or two. Very, very good feature too, because like you know, extra sharp, that super sharp kind of thing that uh, that Autel does, it's overkill, and sometimes it just makes everything look. I mean, it looks sharp, it looks impressive, but it's not really. Um, to most people, and it's a subjective thing, it's it's not really real pretty sometimes. It can be really jarring. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, and so there's that. In terms of safety, we've got something going on with them. Um, I want to see if what they talk about here, if they have any notation about remote ID. Still got your GeoZone. Yeah, it doesn't really discuss it in any degree here. And I have all the updates done on here. Find my drone still looks pretty much the same. Flashing and beeping. Other maps which you don't have even when you're on Wi-Fi. There are no other maps. Um, <clears throat> they need to fix that. And so you can't really do much with it. it it's going to take an incident. Somebody's going to have to get hurt, robbed, shot killed something before they take notice the lawsuit that uh the um, i forgot what organization it was but the drone organization that put a lawsuit up and then appealed it trying to get them to realize the invasion of privacy this is not a license plate for your drone a license plate for your, for your drone uh, would be someone can report it and police and law enforcement can actually see the position of the operator, not the general public. Um, I can't go down the mall, get somebody's license plate number, and find exactly where they're standing in the mall right then, and go up to them and confront them. 
um, and, you know, have an issue. So it's not going to be good. Anyway, so those are the things I just wanted to show real quick. I'm going to go out and test, and the things I want to test is how that looks, and it's also reporting about the um, the wide-angle lens. It says it offers support for it. Well, the only thing they've given me is um, loss of function with it. The wide-angle lens initially allowed me to do everything, but they removed uh, doing panoramas with it, which is smart because there are stitching issues when you have a wider field of view and it did not stitch the individual uh, photos correctly so they fixed that by just allowing you not to just disallowing you to take panoramas so that's okay but i do have to fix the you know i do want to see what they've added if anything i suspect they've probably just restricted it further but how they know it's on the lens we don't know we could never figure it out with the mavic 3 and it's even less obvious here because it's just a little plastic lens that clips in. It must be something to do possibly with the weight of it, but then it would get tripped by different filters, I suppose, or possibly what the camera sees, and that's more likely. Anyway, I will test all these things and do a follow-up uh, probably later on today or tonight. Thanks, everybody. Hope you get this installed and have some fun with it, and we'll all uh, see how much, how much better this is than what we had yesterday. Have a good one, everyone, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks.